a view of Route 219 cave with a, a large stream flowing out of it. We'll see a view of a cave in infrared as well. This is Route 219 cave. There's a stream flowing out of the entrance. The entrance is crawling height. Um, viewed in infrared, you can see the water, which is at 50 some degrees, stands out very clearly on a roughly um, 32 degree day. The cave entrance itself glows quite brightly, and um, you'll see my sun on the right for a sense of scale. So a summary side-by-side -side shot of Route 219 cave in visible light and infrared. The cave stream, uh, the stream coming out of the cave is very obvious, and we'll see uh, that, that these kind of streams can be seen from a great distance in the next clip. The visible light image of Spencer Waterfall Cave and Spencer Cave right below it, they're to the right of center above the evergreen tree in the foreground. The bright streak is the stream from Spencer Waterfall Cave, and then pans to the right where we don't see any more evidence of caves. Here we see the visible light and the infrared side by side, and the Spencer Waterfall Cave um, stream is, is very obvious, and uh, the cave less so, but nonetheless, um, Tamaris is doing a good job of highlighting this. A visible light image of a dig on Friars Hill Road near Carol Bassett's house. The dig wasn't really moving in the air on this day, and uh, we'll look at it in infrared, and it's pretty unremarkable in infrared. And uh, looking around the hillside, uh, you'll see that also in infrared, there doesn't appear to be any blowholes on this particular day. It was about 32 degrees outside. My son at the mouth of a dig on Friars Hill Road near Carol Bassett's house. The dig has been worked on by a variety of people, most recently Bruce Fry. Um, and uh, it wasn't moving in the air on this day, and so it just shows up as a um, black area. Um, I don't know if it was that much colder than the surrounding terrain, but uh, we pan around and you'll see there doesn't appear to be any obvious blowholes on the hillside around it. So, a summary image of the uh, dig in visible light and infrared. And if there's no air movement, we're going to have a tough time detecting it, as you can see. <clears throat> We're looking at a blowhole in, behind Bill Valfour's house in uh, Eunice. The blowhole sits right on top of Carson Creek Cave, and we're going to look at two views of it, this visible light and then in infrared. The um, hole without anybody around it, obviously not, not uh, readily seen. Um, contrast that with the uh, infrared. This is panning around a grassy yard at Bill Balfour's house in Eunice, and eventually we'll, there's a small blowhole about the size of a fist and it is right over Culverson Creek Cave and shines very clearly in the infrared. Um, small, so easily overlooked, and um, there at the end you'll see my son for, for scale. A view of the hillside by NEFA. When we went there we didn't realize that there was a blowhole close to NEFA. NEFA's uh, off the view to the right, um, but in infrared, a blowhole shows up very clearly around the center of the photo. This is a view of the blowhole, a closer view, and um, about fist size, and not terribly obvious, but uh, thanks to infrared, we found it. Here we see the hillside by NEFA in infrared, and there's a blowhole right in the center that's very obvious. A side by side comparison of the blowhole by the MIFA dig in visible light and infrared. And um, as we saw in the, the earlier clips, um, the blowhole stands out very prominently. So, Tamarisk offers a lot of promise for, for finding caves and, and future digs.
rounding things out, we see a picture of the Tamarisk 320 here. Uh, its dimensions are roughly two inches across, so very small. And um, as we saw, very, very useful.